And regarding those changes between 5.6 and 5.7, uh, of course, there are, there are numbers. That the, the list is really long. Um, and we picked a couple of those issues that we found um, rather nasty uh, and that may cause some problems. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, is change in information schema. So uh, so basically, what happened is that the views, uh, global status, session status, global variables, and session variables, they have been moved uh, to the performance schema. And while it doesn't sound bad, uh, that the thing is that uh, those views are pretty common to be queried by different monitoring and trending solutions. Um, so if your trending software won't find this, uh, you know, those views in uh, 5.7, um, it may, I mean, th there will be no data to, to, to show, right? If your monitoring tool will, find, will not find those uh, views, uh, you know, in, in 5.7, it may raise some alerts and wake you up during the night. Um, so there is a way so you can basically set this variable show compatibility 5.6 uh, and set it to 1 to enable it. And then the behavior will be kind of reverted. Uh, but it is important uh, that you keep in mind this. That, well, you, you either want to, uh, you know, upgrade your monitoring trending tools uh, to the version which supports 5.7 or, well, introduce the changes on your own. Because, I mean, this is pretty small change. Like, you, instead of querying information schema dot global status, you should query performance schema dot global status. So, not a big deal, but, but this change has to, be, has to be made. Just in case you, you, you won't be affected by this problem uh, at some point in the future. Um, SQL mode changes. So in MySQL 5.7, uh, strict around tables mode uh, is used by default. Uh, and I would add finally. So uh, so the times you, when you could insert you know, invalid data or you can um, skip a column in the insert and this column doesn't have a default value and so on and so forth, these times are gone. Uh, hopefully for good. Um, but on the other hand, this is a problem because um, some application, some applications can rely on the previous behavior. Uh, it's less, you know, uh, those more relaxed defaults. Therefore, you have to uh, check it. Basically, of course, you can you can uh, change the revert this change by setting a different SQL mode. I wouldn't recommend it because it's those new defaults are definitely better. Uh, but for this transitional period of time, you may have to do this. So you have to keep in mind that this change may affect your application. Um, changes in the authentication model. So a couple of things changed here. For starters, the pref, pre 4.1 passwords have been removed finally. Uh, so no old passwords, uh, variables, no, no, no functions uh, regarding this, and that's that's really good. Um, and of course, if by any chance you have old password format, it won't work, obviously. Um, one thing that I didn't put here, uh, but it's which still can be pretty annoying, is that um, so far the password was stored in a password column. Um, right now, the column name changed. I don't really recall to how it is uh, right now, how it's called right now, but but the, the column name changed, so some queries may fail because of that. Um, very serious change uh, which happened is that the password password out expiration uh, policies uh, have been added. So um, basically, how it works is that every user entry uh, user table um, has uh, additional columns which are defining the password expiration policy. Among others, and this is what is important for us, um, when the password expires in days. So 
we can say set maybe like 30 days or seven days or, or 365 or whatever. And um, the thing is that if you upgrade from a previous version to MySQL 4.7, uh, if you do it even you know in a correct way, like you you upgrade by in a binary way, um, in, you perform a binary upgrade and then you run MySQL upgrade to, to make any changes as needed. Um, those users uh, from this previous version will have um, this password expiration uh, set to null. And if a user have, uh, has this value set, this column set to null, um, there is a default password lifetime uh, global variable uh, which kicks in and governs how how it works for this particular user. Um, and, and here's the thing. So for MySQL 5.7 up to and including uh, 5.7.10, uh, this uh, default password lifetime variable was set to one year, which basically means that when you upgrade it to, 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 this, to one of those versions uh, from MySQL 5.6, for example, um, in a year, your users won't be able to get to, to, to run queries because you'll be getting errors uh, that the password has expired that you have to you know, create a new one. Obviously, it does, it's not a very ideal situation to be in when we are talking, for example, about the users that you use that your application uses to connect. Um, in uh, 5.6.11, this default changed to, uh, and it's currently it's set to zero, which means that there is no uh, password expiration for such users, which is okay, which is good, um, well, safe in terms of the compatibility, not so safe in terms of the security. Um, therefore, what you can find on, therefore there's a discussion on the MySQL server team.com uh, blog, and the, 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 the final, like, uh, the, the information there stated that uh, this, this behavior may change in the future. So right now, we, we, we can create, we, we are safe basically because this uh, default password lifetime is is disabled. I mean, there's no expiration, but it may change in the future. Therefore, to make sure that you are not affected by this problem and you won't end up with users that cannot run queries, uh, what you need to do after you upgrade is to go through the every single user entry that you have and explicitly set uh, whatever password expiration policy you want. Otherwise, you may risk that at some point you may end up you know, without any kind of uh, access if the default value change at some point in the future. Of course, these are not the only changes. Uh, as I said, the list is uh, rather long. Um, some others are, for example, um, that the uh, Redo and Tando uh, logs in InnoDB, in they change their format. Uh, so you have to you have to use uh, you have to disable fast fast shutdown when you uh, stop your 5.6 for upgrade. This is to make sure that all the data from those logs will be flushed to the table spaces, uh, because otherwise uh, those logs may not be the data still may be you know located in those logs. Those logs may not be may not be readable by 5.7. And as such, you may experience some kind of data loss. Uh, 2D GTR format have been, uh, has been removed. So if you use this kind of uh, format, you may be affected. Um, so the user-defined locks uh, system has been redesigned. Uh, right now, it is possible to implement multiple locks uh, per session. You, you can grab multiple locks per session, basically. Uh, but on, but this makes that very likely that if you are if your application uses this kind of log system, most likely you will have to uh, make some changes in how it actually uses them. Um, so under some circumstances, they may be a uh, um, scaling compatibility issue uh, when uh, when the Rift uh, the Rift merge uh, optimizer uh, switch is enabled. 
This is because um, what happened is that uh, when you run delete or update um, on some table and then you choose rows in a work condition based on a subquery which is in, which involves the same table. In past, the subquery was materialized, and um, and basically, even though you're kind of doing uh, picking the rows to delete based on the query from the same table, in fact, it was a temporary table, so it was not the same one. Right now, at some point, this uh, this uh, subquery materialization can be avoided, but then you are doing you know, you're modifying rows based on the where from the same table, which is not possible to do. So you get uh, you get an error. And the full list of changes is available at uh, my school documentation site. The link is at the bottom of this slide, of course. Uh, and you can find this kind of um, uh, this kind of link, uh, this kind of uh, document for every uh, my school release. So if you're upgrading from from 5.5, you should look for uh, upgrading from previous series in MySQL 5.6 documentation um, to, to to go through that list of possible problems. So uh, once we kind of confirm that we are able to actually perform the, the, the upgrade, that we don't have any serious incompatibility incompatibility issues. Uh, with the new version, well, it is time to, to do some testing. And if we are talking about testing, well, we definitely should test all the things, really all the things. So uh, the first step, though, will, will be to design our test environment. And um, what I would say is that it should be as close to the production as possible. Uh, and there are many reasons for that. For example, you know, if you have different hardware, you know, slower drives, slower disks, uh, slower CPU, less memory, whatever, uh, basically your results uh, that you get from this test, from those tests, um, those results may not be really relevant to, uh, to your production environment. Um, you know, obviously queries may be slower um, because they have slower I/O, slower CPU, what, uh, less memory, so so, so you, you have to do more I/O, so on and so forth. Uh, what's even worse, um, when you when you know that you're running on a slower environment, you may you know some regressions may just slip and you, you may not notice them because you just assume that okay it's slower, but well I mean I'm expecting queries to be slower. While in fact is there's a performance regression, and uh, at the end you will uh, you will end up with you know burning production uh, clusters because of the not optimized query. You'll be trying to figure out what the uh, what is going on and how to revert this change or how to tune this query. Uh, 